When we talk about DNA, we always mention the central dogma. This is using genes to create proteins. The first step of that process is transcription. This is where we use DNA to create an mRNA transcript. Next, we have to use that mRNA transcript to create proteins. We do this through a process called translation. In this video, we're going to talk about exactly how that's done. If I asked you to translate something, what would you do? You would change it into a different language. When we translate DNA, we use a similar process where we're taking the mRNA sequence we made during transcription and translating that into the language of the proteins. And you wouldn't translate letter by letter. Instead, you would go word by word and your DNA and RNA are similar. Every three nitrogenous bases makes up something called a codon. Codons act like words, and they're used to create proteins, which are like sentences made out of words. Proteins and their substructures, polypeptides, are chains of amino acids. There are 64 possible codons, 61 of them encode amino acids. The different combinations are located on this chart. Just as different words can have the same meaning in a language, Different codons can encode the same amino acid. Just because we have 61 possible codons doesn't mean that that translates into 61 possible amino acids. For example, even though these codons are different, they all encode the same amino acid, arginine. This isn't unique to just arginine. Despite that we have 61 codons, they only encode 20 amino acids. Since some codons translate to the same amino acid, we refer to this code as redundant or degenerate. Now, what about those remaining three codons that don't encode amino acids? They're called stop codons and they tell the protein to stop translating. Okay, so let's take a step back and look at what we've learned before we move on. A codon is made up of a sequence of three nitrogenous bases. These form a unit of the DNA or RNA genetic code. There are 64 possible codons. 61 of those encode 20 unique amino acids. The rest of them tell protein synthesis it's time to start or stop. Some codons play different roles in translation. For example, the codon AUG encodes the amino acid methionine, which indicates that translation should start. Others, such as UAA, UAG, and UGA, indicate where translation should stop because the polypeptide is complete. But how do we make this codon amino acid mRNA love connection? The mRNA will bind to a ribosome, which serves as a kind of molecular matchmaker. The ribosome binds with something called transfer RNA, or tRNA, and if the mRNA is present, it will match the tRNA to the corresponding mRNA codon. Why is this important? Well, one end of the tRNA is called an anticodon, and it binds to the codon on the mRNA, fitting into it like a key fits into a lock. The other end of the tRNA is attached to an amino acid. This amino acid corresponds to that codon. When the tRNA docks into the mRNA, its amino acid joins an already forming chain. This is aided by a second ribosome, which joins the first. The ribosome complex then moves forward, exposing a new mRNA codon and allowing a new tRNA to bring its amino acid to the party. This is like adding beads to a necklace. This continues until eventually we reach the stop codon and the amino acid sequence is finished. The amino acids have different charges, and these interact, either attracting or repelling each other. In the end, all of the charges interacting creates a 3D structure, which can be a protein. The proteins created through translation can have loads of different functions within the cell, and together these functions create different traits. This whole process of using genes to create proteins is called the central dogma. So let's take a moment and recap what we've learned. 
So the codon is the yin to the anticodon's yang. The anticodon is the link between the mRNA and the amino acid sequence. The tRNA has an anticodon on one side and an amino acid on the other. When tRNA docks with the mRNA, its amino acid drops off and joins the ever-growing chain. So mRNA is a hot topic these days because of its role in a newly created vaccine. So how can mRNA keep you from getting sick? That's all in the protein that the mRNA encodes. In this case, the mRNA encodes a cell surface protein that your body recognizes as an invading virus. But don't worry, this isn't the actual virus. This is more of a molecular mugshot, which is going to train your immune system to recognize the virus so that it can find it and kill it before it ever makes you sick. Your immune system uses this process all the time to tell the difference between your cells and anything that doesn't belong. Imagine that your immune cells are checking IDs at the door and making sure that only the people on the list get in. Your cells will be on the list and invading cells will not. Alerting the bouncers will result in them getting the boot. Let's do a quick recap. Every three bases on mRNA make a codon. There are 64 codons, 61 encode 20 amino acids, which eventually make up a protein. Special codons indicate the start and stop for the translation process. The mRNA docks on the ribosome. There, the tRNA will join it, fitting its anticodon with the mRNA codon and bringing the appropriate amino acid. This amino acid will join an ever-growing chain like adding beads to a necklace, eventually creating a protein. mRNA can be used to make things like vaccines, which provide your body with molecular mugshots to help cells recognize and attack invaders before you ever get sick. And that's how we get proteins from mRNA. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos. The next one will deal with the history of DNA, the drama, the mistakes, the science. Stay tuned.